Okay, so this is Android 16 running on a Raspberry Pi 5, and I've also managed to get the Google Play Store working on it as well, and it's working great, really, really pleased with it. Let's go through a full tutorial on how to install it on your Raspberry Pi 5, and I'm currently showing it on the slimmest Raspberry Pi 5 tablet in this room. So for this tutorial, I'm using my version of KDE Plasma. I'm gonna use one of these Samsung Pro SD cards because they're nice and fast for Android. I don't think you need NVMe for Android, but you can if you're using it as your daily driver, I guess. But because it's such a lightweight operating system, it just copes really well. So first up on your web browser, type in Kang and look for the Pi 5 version in this case. And we have Android 16. And scroll down to the downloads and you don't want the updatable one, you want this one. I have got videos on how to upgrade from previous versions of Constacang's Android. So let's hit download and I'm going to save it in my downloads folder. Now although I'm using my version of KDE Plasma which is available to download, you can just use Raspberry Pi OS. In fact you can use pretty much any Linux system should work for this. Okay, that's all finished downloading. Let's open Raspberry Pi Imager, choose OS, and go to Use Custom. And it's this version, AOSP16. Choose Storage. This is my 128 gig SD card that I put in there. Hit Next, No to Changes, and Yes. Pop your password in and come back when that's all done. Okay, that's all done. So we can close this down. Now, if I go into my files, and specifically the boot folder, there is a config.txt. And in here, you need to select the right boot device. So if you're booting from SD card, you don't need to do anything here. If you are booting from a USB device, you would delete the hash and you would put a hash here. But I'm booting from SD card, so basically anything that's got a hash in it ignores. Don't need to change anything else here. So I'm going to shut down this operating system. Now my Pi 5 always boots from the SD card by default, but if you've changed anything on yours, you'll need to be pressing the space bar when you start things. So I've just switched on now. If I tap the space bar, I've got a boot menu. And I want to boot from SD card, which is number one. There we go, that's booting up. Okay, that's starting to boot Android. And we're in. But it's incredibly basic, and the web browser's awful. It doesn't let you download anything. This is the AOSP version. So we're just going to shut it down again. And this time when I boot up, I'm going to boot up the operating system that's on the NVMe drive, the Linux operating system. So number six for NVMe. Now you need a program called Gparted. If you haven't already got it installed, you need to type in sudo apt install Gparted and install it. I've already got it installed, so it shows up for me. And we need to select the partition. Well, I can see this is it. Look. So my 128 gig micro SD card, 105 gig is unallocated. So we can left click on this and then right click and resize. And then just drag it all the way over to the right and hit resize, tick, and apply. And that bit's done, so we can close that down. Now I'm going to need a program to be able to install this. So I open the web browser and we're looking for Aptide APK. And if we go to Aptide, this is an alternate store for Android downloads. So Aptide app. Click on download and you can see it's downloading. Okay, that's finished. So we can open the location and we can grab that APK file. So this is basically an Android app. Hit copy. And I'm gonna plug a USB stick in now because I think it's the easiest way of doing this. Uh, and let's open that up. And I'm gonna paste the APK file in here. So this is on my USB stick. So Android will have access to that. So let's close all this down and you need to reboot pressing the space key because you're going to boot up Android from the SD card. So Android's booted up. If I go into settings, under storage you can see 11% use 114 gig free. So now if I go into files, so to, to access the folders you're just dragging up 
on a blank part of the screen. And you can see I've got files here. AFRO is my USB stick. It's actually an SSD, but it's the same principle. And here's the Aptide APK. So we're going to double click on that and go to settings. And we're going to allow from this source and install. And now we can open it up and I can skip all this for now. So I just need a web browser. Now I generally use Edge for this process just because it's there and it's available and it's always worked for me and it's based on Chromium. So let's click on that and install and OK. We need to allow, we don't need to allow notifications though. And while you're waiting for this to download, you could always subscribe and hit like. Uh, and also I'm looking for subscribers on TikTok because I'm very close to 10,000. Now if you don't need the Google services, you're actually all set because you can use the app Tide store to install all sorts of games and apps. But I always like to put the Google services on there because I've got some games in my account and some progress and things like that. Okay, that's all downloaded. Hit settings and allow and install. Then we can press the back arrow and we can open the Edge browser. I'm happy to set this as the default browser. And confirm. So now we need to do a search for mind the gapps GitHub, which is here. So let's click on that. And we're looking for Android 16, which is down here. Look, and we need the 16 ARM 64 version. Go down to the releases bit here, and you need to download the big one. So 480 megabytes and download. We can click on downloads to have a look at it and come back when that's all done. That's finished. I need to go to settings now. Scroll down to about tablet. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom here, build number. Just keep clicking it until it says you're now a developer. Then we go system. Scroll down to Raspberry Pi settings. Reboot to recovery. Scroll down a bit more and you'll find SSH and ADB, which is here. So enable both of those. And I did notice in here, you can enable ZRAM. I'm not gonna do it for this video, but I might have a play around with it for something else. So now if I hit home, drag down from the top left, so left click and drag down and hit the power button and restart and it will restart in recovery and we need to hit install and go to download and you can see mine the G apps is there that we just downloaded click on that and left click and swipe this to the right to confirm and that's installing then we can do wipe dalvik and swipe to wipe and then reboot and now that it's rebooted, if you have a look at your apps, you'll see the Google Play Store is there, but it won't work. So if you click on it and go to sign in, okay, that doesn't usually happen. Let's try that again. It took ages to get to that point as well. And you should get this message. This device isn't Play Protect certified. So we need to shut this down again. So you need another device to control your Pi now. Now I'm gonna use a Pi to control a Pi. You could use uh, a Linux device like this tablet from Chewy. If you're using a Windows device to control your Pi, I've got this video which shows the process of ADB on Windows, but you can do it with a Mac as well. So let's go into this one and open a terminal and pop this in. sudo apt install android-tools-adb and, and android-tools-fastboot. And yes, and I see it says android-tools-fastboot command not found. Didn't notice that last night, so I'm going to push on ahead. So now we need to connect our Pi to the computer that we're using to control it with a data cable. Now this is a USB A to B cable. And if I plug it into this Tridix adapter and switch on, I can see that this supports data. It's a USB 3.2 connection. So I've written it on it. If I pop the SD card into this other Pi, another Pi 5, and plug in to the USB-C connection, which is how you would power your Pi 5. 
Now I just plug the USB into my computer that's going to be controlling it and it lights up. So it's booting up Android and if we type ADB devices we can see it's connected and if we tap in LSUSB you'll see that it shows up there as well. I'm guessing it's this one Google Inc Nexus Pixel device charging and debug. Now we need to type in ADB and root and then ADB and shell then put this line in. I'll put it in the description because I think it looks differently when you paste it in. This is how it should look at the bottom here. SQLite data user and so on. All right, let's hit return. And there's our Android ID. So this is the Google Framework ID and you need this bit. And it is different to the other one I had. So it is unique for each installation or each Pi. So copy that. I think it's a 16 digit number. You're going to need that. Or well, what I'm going to do is take a picture on my phone. So that's the complicated bit done. Let's shut this down. Now what I'm going to do is boot up this Pi that had the Android in it. Just transfer all my cables over and that should start to boot up. It's gone green and Android's booting up. So let's go to the web browser and we're going to go to Consta Kang's page again. I don't think it matters which one, but let's go to the Raspberry Pi 5 one as that's what we're on. Click on the Android 16. So let's do Control F and do device. It's probably, oh, no, it won't be device. Let's try framework. Framework. There we go. Register Google Services Framework Android ID. Click on that. And then you need to sign into your account. Use my phone to sign in. So I'm going to say yes it's me and I've got to tap on the number 32. So all we need to do on this page is to tap that number that we took a photo of earlier on in here. So that's the number. Click I'm not a robot and click register. Device registered. And close the browser down now. Now, I don't know how long this takes, but last night it took a while. Uh, so I reckon I probably gave it three hours. I'd check it every now and then, restart it, and it wouldn't work. But I tried it this morning and it was working. Sometimes it's just instant. So if we click on Play Store now and sign in, this device isn't Play Protected, so you just got to wait. Once it's done and it's working, it just lets you sign in and you can use the Play Store and all the Google services. You can swap it over to any other Pi 5 because the Raspad that I showed at the beginning of the video, I actually registered it on this 4 gig Pi that I showed you just now, but it was registered in that and then I moved it to another device. So yeah, once it's registered, it seems you can move it between different Pi 5s and it still works. There may be a different process for NVMEs and uh, if I find out if there's a different process I'll try and put that in the description. It will just be the, the last little bit where you copy that line with SQLite 3 in it. Yeah, still not there. So after about an hour it has now let me sign in and we can agree to the terms of service and we're in. What I have noticed though, if I left click and try and drag across, it doesn't work. So you're probably going to navigate around with the keyboard. Yeah, if you go left and right with the keys, uh, and if you same if you plugged in a controller, it would be the same. So for some reason you can't swipe along here, uh, which is weird because you can on a touchscreen. So on the Raspad that I showed right at the start of the video, that bit works fine. But if I was to go to games for instance, Apparently this game supports mouse and keyboard, so let's give it a try. Soul Knight. It's a free one. Okay, WASD keys work fine on the keyboard. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. Happy with that. So great work by Consta Kang and everybody else involved. Another great version of Android on Raspberry Pi. And great work by the Mind the G Apps team. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.